Hi everyone, it's Alfred, and welcome back to Take Three. Um, so, minor things. I left my recording settings too high, and essentially, I couldn't save my own recording. So my first take of this was completely unusable. And then when I fixed it, I'm not talking about that yet. When I fixed it, I uh, didn't actually fix everything. So when I started the recording, I still noticed that I could make it better. Um, so uh, I hope you're ready for an extra unfocused episode because we're starting it right from the pause menu instead of the uh, start screen. So one thing I wanted to mention, I turned on the famine skull. Weapons drop of the AI have half the ammo they normally would. You might want to pack an extra magazine. I did that because it'll force me to use more different weapons, a larger variety of weapons. Um, and I mentioned this in the recording that is now gone, but I initially uh, cut the recording because I wanted to make sure that my voice was not too loud because I have a very loud voice and I don't want to blow up people's ears. But I'm going to watch this cutscene now. Um, I might start shifting my rule on the cutscenes because sometimes they just go. That isn't a bad thing, of course. But... You know, I'm here to entertain, right? So the Covenant already has such a foothold that they can start to patrol. Which is why they sent us in to see how the Covenant's doing. I mentioned this in the other episodes, but Six is such of a uh, lone wolf. Oh, bad texture there. And there. Wow, you can see bad textures all over the place. That's embarrassing. Is that me? Did I screw up my own textures? Recon team Bravo reporting in. Three and six in position. It's starting to get crowded up here, Cat. Then we're closing in. Report to any Covenant structures or devices. Direct action may be necessary. Copy that. When Cat runs an op, direct action is always necessary. Here, you may need these. High velocity, armor piercing. They'll take the hat off an elite at 2,000 yards, and they ain't cheap. Americans love spending money on bullets, and so they put it in all of their games. Oh, I'll be in touch. You, of course, cannot climb this rock, so you will have to go that way. Crunch. Recon Covenant combat capabilities. A lot of C's in there. Luckily, I've got my recon hat on, so it should be pretty good. Um, I mentioned this in some of the other episodes, but... Neutralize. But Six's nature as a jack-of-all-trades means that his ability to... Oh, man. This might get messy. One hell of a wake-up call saying your boss got assassinated next to you. Like, do you go home after that? I see an armor lock. Time to play, boys. <laughs> nice. I love June. I have a habit of liking sniper characters, though. I really love the feel of this mission as well. It's a real fishing trip, you know? There was this time, probably about 10 years ago now, I was playing Team Fortress 2, and I just, I was with a bunch of guys I don't know, and we were all playing Sniper, because, you know, haha, -ha, Team Fortress 2. Yoink. Um, and there was just a feeling that, like, I felt the way boomers must feel when they go fishing, and I loved that. That was amazing. So active camo is this. It mutes your audio, and while staying still or moving carefully and slowly, you're invisible. When moving quickly, you just get this weird kind of ghost filter. 
As you probably noticed, it also fills up your mini-map with uh, invisibility. Uh, with uh, um, decoys. This is to throw off people who might be looking. So it tells them that there is someone invisible in the area that just doesn't tell them where. I like it. It's better than just saying that there's nothing. I wonder if he has different lines for uh, if you decide to sneak past. But yeah, the feeling of just like having a sniper duel at a thousand yards with June is dope. He's got a jetpack, damn it. Shooting, of course, kind of blows your cover. Especially with this thing. June's got armor lock? I noticed that most of Noble Team actually uses armor lock. Whether or not that makes sense. Um, I don't know if this is mentioned in game anywhere, but I think uh, it's canon that Cat invented the sprint ability. And the way that sprint actually works is that Spartans are already normally moving at a pretty decent clip. But uh, Sprint allows them to unlock their power limiters and move faster than they really should and risk damaging the armor. Oh, he's dead. Risk damaging the armor, um, but they, you know, they haul ass. Take the hat off an elite, huh? Huh, bud? This mission is not fun on Legendary. I probably spent um, two hours on this mission. Incoming. Looks like you really pissed them off. Damn, I completely blew that. Sorry, I'm just focusing on hardcore to shooting. Um, I love this mission. It really demonstrates that Six can do like way more than people give him credit. And something I can't remember who I finished talking about last episode. Nice. Um, Six has a lot of experience. Oh boy, this is bad. <laughs> Six is a very experienced protagonist. Um, there's a lot of games where like protagonists just fall ass over butt into heroism and shit. Um, Halo doesn't really have a lot of that. Um, something I noticed that Halo does is that all their protagonists are very experienced. Um, Master Chief in the first game is... Like, even in the first game, has been through decades of training. The Rookie, I believe his name is, in ODST, is similarly very trained. Um, and... Like, ODST... This unit of ODST is not his, like, first rodeo or even his first team and then a similar thing with this where you know six is a spartan three so he's already had a bunch of training and like they made him a spartan excuse me everyone now i will become the ghost and fade away um and six is able to recognize zealot class elites by their uh quality of armor Not just by, like, how their armor looks. Ooh, interesting. But the way that they their armor recharges is also something that gives away to him. And it's something that, like, I appreciate, you know? Because, like, Six already has the accreditation of hyper-lethal before he becomes... Uh, I already have that. Before he is added to Noble Team. I uh, recently bought all the Half-Life games, besides Alex. Uh, 
that Steam sale of like, hey, Valve released a game for the first time in 20 years, and it's a game that people actually wanted instead of Artifact. Um, that sale is still going on, so all the Half-Life games are on sale in this gigantic mega super sale. That guy was alive. If letting grunts live was um, an option, I would do it more often, I think. I love the little guys, you know? They're so goofy. Don't eat them. Jackals, though. Jackals, I will pop with no hesitation. Kill all Jackals 2020. Just, I hate those. I hate those bastards. But yeah, Six's fastidiousness is a gameplay point. Because, like, yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, he's already been a badass. Did I not get this? That's kind of weird. Weird. I will take this. Um, the pistol is very, very good, especially at very, very long ranges. Uh, I don't actually need it right now, because I've got the rifle. And I will need one later, but they give those things out like candy. I'm pretty sure civvies can get them, which is why those guys do. I love you, June. Uh, minor spoilers for a game that's already 10 years old and gives away its uh, thing in the beginning. But of all the people who die in Reach, because, you know, this game opens with Reach being glassed. Of all the people, June is one of the only survivors. And, you know, part of it is just his nature. Like, he's far away from the battlefield by default. But also, it's just because he's so damn cool. Also, I think he was in a book, so they couldn't, like, just get rid of him. Ruh -ruh. What is that, like $1,000 a shot? 2000 yep. yep. And now... Oh, come on. No, I'm not here, guys. Look somewhere else. Fine. Damn. <laughs> Guess we'll go in with uh, this now. Nothing like the stealthy shotgun, you know? They call me the silent... Oop. Uh-oh. So, yeah. Grunts... Uh, grunts need a union, man. They're so low tier that the Covenant will just be like, Hey, go suicide bomb. And the Grunts say, Okay. You don't see the elites doing that. Or the jackals, no matter how much they should go kill themselves. Excuse me, peace. You know, giving the shield is actually... Sorry, giving the health is actually pretty merciful. Because in games where you just have the shield, and then your shield gets blown back by uh, all the energy weapons, you know, you just die. Uh oh. Oh, all right. Now uh, quickly reload this slowly reloading gun. Come back here. He was saying something. Hello, beautiful. Now, show me the dudes. If I remember correctly, I'm going to need this in a second, so. Not for you. Oh, got some new ones, huh? What does that line refer to?
All right, coming up is a weird thing that I don't remember. I don't remember seeing these in the original Halo Reach. Wow. Those things take so many shots to kill on Legendary. I probably don't remember them because they only show up in this level. By the way, I love this game for doing that. And, you know, there's probably a long Star Wars-esque wiki page on these guys and how they're... Uh, Gulta. Yeah, there's probably a long, long wiki page about how they're, like, crucial to the ecosystem or whatever, and, you know, killing them is a crime, but, like, whatever. But I'm very appreciative of how Bungie will just put stuff and just have it be there, you know? Hey, guys. They're very, very willing to have just weird stuff in games that just never shows up, like how the target locator slash designator only shows up in that one level. I think he's talking about how he can hear the sniper rounds. Are you coming with us or something, bro? Got one. Conspicuous American accent on Space Hungary. I said this in the last recording. I don't remember if I said it this time. I was wondering what the Japanese... Hey, guys. I was wondering what the Japanese dub of this game sounds like. And I said that cat's probably a Bokuko. Bokuko is one of those... Oop, excuse me, sir. It's one of those, like, very Japanese things. Uh, it's... Japanese is a language where... Uh, pronouns are in the, in the language... So, like, if you were to say, Ore wo dare da tomo te yagaru, you would be saying, Who the hell do you think I am? And also, I'm a man. Whereas if you were to say, Boku no dare da tomo te yagaru, you would say, Who the hell do you think I am? Also, I'm a little boy. It's a trick that you'll notice in a lot of uh, anime, where younger characters are played by older voice actors. June is so cool. You need a better gun, dude. Here they are. Got it. I'm in your deck. <laughs> yeah, just he's gonna go up against the the elite with a pistol with twelve rounds in it. Fifteen total. Of course, now I'm gonna do exactly that, but I'm six. So yeah, the militias are uh, yoinking stuff from the American space military. Space America, but you know, we're Americans. You know, Halo's a very American series. You know, now that this is dry, that means that I can go down and get one of these beauties. Oh, and also there's more pistol ammo down there. I guess it's probably just the briefcase. Kill all jackals. Woof! That was like a zero second wake up. I can probably keep this on me now, right?
Woof. Oh, of course. I came to the one building that is down any form of hell. Though I can see some in this, so. You know, I put on Famine, so I uh, have to switch weapons more often, but I noticed that I ha haven't. And it's probably because I'm just using the stuff that the game gives me. Oh, June. Yep, that's what I expected to see on Famine. Oh, whoops. Sorry, bro. Here, take this. So, uh, I was stuck at this specific checkpoint for probably a good hour. Just got to take cover really quick. Excuse me, everyone. Just rapid, rapid hot swapping between abilities. These dudes are kind of doing it. Probably shouldn't stand so close to them if they're going to blow up, though. Oh, it's concussion rifle guy. Oh, please. It's kind of annoying how the stealth completely whites out your audio. And it makes sense because, like, it makes you noise canceling by making it so you cancel all noise. And it's also a fact of gameplay balancing, but also it pisses me off. I wonder if you can shoot through these. Nope, there's an invisible wall on them. I really love how pragmatic June is willing to be. Real champ. That's why he's alive. The pragmatism of like, oh, my weapons aren't working. Well, let's steal the enemy's weapons that like Master Chief and Six show off like instantly. I don't want this. I want this. DMR is just a little more reliable. Go team. Give me that, actually. I like the idea of having... Oh, Jeff Ramsey! <laughs> there he is! Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's... I mean, why else? Who else could it be? But yeah, that's named after Jeff Ramsey of Achievement Hunter. Uh, who's also responsible for Red and Blue, who, like, Bungie loves. Bungie loves Achievement Hunter. This guy is kind of a problem, but... That 
That was so cool. <laughs> Oh, the grunts are crying. I feel bad for the poor little guys. They're just so small, you know? Oh, excuse me, sir. This is not good. Yeah, this just, just kind of got tanked there. Conserving ammo by just beating people is always a really environmentally friendly thing to do. I find that at least. You know how expensive bullets are? I always, I always feel so glad whenever I see an elite, I'm like, ah, finally a worthy opponent. And of course, they're kind of not getting it now, but you can really tango with elites on legendary. Oh, sorry. Did you say the world doesn't need any more dead Spartans? Is the dude with the concussion rifle still with me? Because hell yeah, man. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, I believe hunters show up in this... I know for a fact that they do on Legendary, but I can't remember if they do on Heroic or not. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And now we wait. Where did the dude with a concussion rifle go? Because even if I don't know, I want it. You know? I don't care if he's dead. I want his loot. Whoop. Guess I found him. Guys. Ah, I see what happened. I kind of dig how Halo has regenerating health for a lot of the enemies, too, because it prioritizes aggressive movement, you know? You can't really get a war of attrition going on you again. Jeez. You can't get a war of attrition going on something that regenerates health, you know? There was a, the dude who kept killing me on in Oni Sword Base, the... The, uh, the elite with a concussion rifle, or the, the fuel rod cannon. Um, the dude who kept killing me there, the reason that, like, I got stuck there on Legendary because I just couldn't get past him, because I would plug away when it was safe and then run away because it was dangerous, and I just wouldn't do enough damage to kill him, and I had blown through too many of the plasma rounds, killing all the other elites in the building. Oh, boy, they're just getting picked off like flies. Stealth elites, huh? Oh, hell yeah. Um, I believe that assassination animation is actually based off of a cutscene from ODST where one of the ODSTs, I want to say Buck, uh, kills a brute that way. And of course, what are brutes? I don't know what they are. Um, we'll see brutes later in this game, of course. The nature of having AI squaddies is so weird. Like, it's not like a Half-Life thing where, like, oh, we're all Marines, you know? It's not a Adrian Shepard. By the way, Adrian Shepard, prime example of what I was complaining about earlier. 
I got distracted because of something else, but the reason that I was going to talk about how I bought all the Half-Life games is because I wanted to mention how Adrian Shepard is exactly the kind of protagonist I was bitching about. Like, Gordon Freeman is like 28 or 29 or something. Maybe 27 at the youngest. Adrian Shepard's like 22. Like, he's fresh out of college. He just joined the military. But yeah, and then Shepard is just absolutely wrecking house like he's Gordon Freeman, even though he's just a dude who has been, like, barely trained. Ooh, that's dangerous. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. This is all kinds of not bad. I mean, not good. Opposite of bad. I mean, opposite of good. Oh, good job, June. Or is that someone else? Well, anyway. Ah. Sorry, sir or madam. Or amorphous gender worm. Yeah, um... So a lot of enemies have AI that triggers a berserk state in them. That was dumb. A lot of enemies have AI that tr triggers a berserk state in them. Um, brutes, who are brutes again, but brutes have it when their armor gets popped off. Grunts have it if something isn't going their way. That's usually when they uh, do the suicide rush to you. Uh, hunters have it. These are called hunters in uh, U.S. nomenclature, by the way. <laughs> Dude, so cool. Hunters have it for whenever their pair bond is killed. Oh, that'll help. One. Is this a joke? All right. There's one. Oh boy, there's one in here. That was pretty rough. I'll be honest. All right, then we go find the... Uh, then we go find the rocket launcher and swap out our munitions. Sorry, I'm just focusing in hardcore. I know my job here is to stammer away my way through this game. I say stammering. Shouldn't walk backwards. I really should have gotten that plasma rifle, but I don't want to move too much. Oh, June finished him off. Good job, buddy. So something I... Oh, boy. Something I wanted to mention, and I hope I don't forget it, because it's a cool uh, idea. Oh, boy, I was going the wrong way. <laughs> um, the AI squad mates aren't really too, too useful in this game. And, you know, there's probably a couple reasons. One, there's no gameplay reason for them to be. The Spartans have to be, because they are both Spartans and they die in cutscenes, so they are immortal in gameplay. Um... The uh, AI buddies, however, aren't. So they're just, you know, stuck being mortal humans in worlds where regenerating health is a kind of requirement to be a badass. Almost, you know, mostly. There is the ODST where health doesn't regenerate. Oh, there's a shade up there. I forgot. I also got stuck here for like an hour, funnily enough. Those uh those shades aren't no are not a joke.
Now, I'm pretty sure that there's a medkit back here. No, but I will take that. And I won't take this. Sorry, DMR Coon, but your time is now. Perfect. That was perfect. Sorry, just let me suck my own dick there. I'm trying to hit from the side, but you're getting it to look at me. Now, there's also a few elites up here, which don't make this part easier. But yeah, something about Reach that a lot of games don't have is that it feels like you're losing. You know, that's something that is a really, really big part of Reach. And I think that that's really cool. Oops, sorry, my mic is slipping away from me. Probably because my stand is too short, so I have to balance it on the edge of my chair. This is all kinds of bad. I'm kind of glad I put on Famine, though. I really like the vibe of not having a bunch of weapons. Oh, thank you. It makes me feel cooler to scavenge and stuff. Yeah, sorry. So one of the, one of the things about Reach is that the nature of it is the dwindling party. And like, hey, we're losing a war. You know, that's a vibe that you don't really get. Even in the other Halos. Because in Halo 1, it's like, hey, we're losing. And then you find the Halo and the Flood joins in to make it a Menage a 3. Menage is, of course, French for household. Okay, I'm, break I'm breaking my rule about not segueing for a second. The term Menage a 3 to mean a threesome pisses me off. And, of course, I mean Menage a 3. Excuse me. Don't confuse it for the webcomic. Because a menage a trois specifically refers to a situation wherein housemates are sleeping with each other. Sleeping with Tahir imply they're having sexual intercourse. People who say a menage a trois is just three a threesome is, are idiots. They're dumb and they don't know French. Now, of course, it's also very common that people are dumb and know French, like most of the country of France. Okay, fine. Jeez, I'll go some other way. Shade turrets, man. Where am I? Okay, so I've got the plasma pistol and my shields are recharging. If you time it just right, you can shoot those things out of the sky because you snipe the, the driver, the pilot. Anyway, yeah. Um, in the first Halo game, you only feel like you're losing for a little bit. And, like, humanity is only the underdog for a tiny, tiny portion of the story. Because then, like, all the other stuff happens, and then, like, Halo 2 becomes a thing, and then there's the Great Schism, and uh, elites, like, leave the Covenant. And then humanity wins anyway, like we all knew that they were going to. But in this portion of the of the story of Halo, in the big overarching meta plot, it wasn't obvious that humanity was going to survive, and that's a really cool thing. I think it's really, really dope that that this game gives you that feeling. It's something that's also present in uh, ODST as well. Um, and in that game, it's like, well, yeah, you're playing as a Spartan, you know? You're playing the Half-Life Opposing Force of the Halo franchise. You're not, like, badass super cop Master Chiefman. You're some guy who has a day job. You know? You're someone who the military is not necessarily your life. It's a career. You weren't trained from birth to be a god killer. I'll come back for you, DMR Chan. What if I can just kind of salt the earth here? Oh, 
Uh-oh. 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 Nice. Cool. That's why, I, in some cases, I do really love uh, regenerating health. It was a plague in the in the 2000s and the 2010s of just games that have regenerating health. But now that we've gone back to a lot of games that play a lot more retro, and also because I've just come off of a bunch of Doom and Doom Eternal, and Half-Life for that matter, regenerating health is kind of refreshing. This must This must be how it felt in the 90s when, like, Games were first starting to get regenerating health. Oh yeah, the third shade turret on the grassy knoll. But yeah, I feel the reason that this game gives you the AI party members whose purpose is to just like get killed anyway is because it makes you feel something, you know? It forces you to accept that, like, yeah, most of the people you work party with are going to die. Very rarely do you have a excursion in a in Reach where the random party members that just get added to your squad survive. And I feel like that's probably very intentional, considering how this game treats war and the feeling of losing a war. You see it in some of the later levels as well. But, like, the feeling of, like, yeah, these people are gonna die most of them are you know you're not fighting to win the war here you're fighting so that maybe 10 percent of the idiots on this planet will survive it's something that really gets hammered down in legendary because you die over and over and over again i would love to see someone chart up all the deaths in legendary and like how many spartans would you really need you know like, assuming that, like, they all take turns, and every time one Spartan dies, the other one just goes in to fill the hole. Like, what's the count, you know? How many Spartans total do you need to beat the Covenant? And granted, damn. Dude, I'm dead. You're not going to get anything out of it. There's no blood in the stone, dude. All right, I'm going to move up because there's needle rifles on there. Not here. The next one. Oh, cool. I need that. I hate this gun. I don't know what it is. I think it's two big reasons. Because one, it's not great as a gun, you know? It's okay, it's, you know, it's your workhorse. And it's another cliche that uh, non, like, regenerating health shooters, or regenerating health shooters have a, a SMG or an AK or some other generic machine gun as, the, as your, like, go-to, you know, as your workhorse. You know, this, this is the Ryu of the, of the guns. But, like, it's just so lame. And the, the, the thing is, is that they push it so hard. That's the thing that ticks me off. Because every cutscene that starts, you end up with this damn thing back in your hand. It's a real pain in the butt. Oop. Yeah, it really looks like most of Noble Team uses armor lock. It's interesting. And I mean, it makes sense. It's it's their nature to be stalwart and resolute because that's how normal team be. Cutscene. Time to shut up. If this is the cutscene I'm remembering, there's some good Spartan ass in this if that's what you're looking for. Oh, this is the end. My only friend. Butts, 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 butts. So yeah, uh, that's a bad sign for humans. Wow, yeah. Oh, boy.
Uh, hey, that's episode three of Reach. Thanks for coming by. Um, thanks for listening to me ramble about almost nothing. Um, I'm going to start the next episode right, right here because I'm just so excited to record this. I'm probably going to record this whole game in a single session <laughs> or a single day, at least considering I already took a break. Um, but yeah, that's Halo Reach. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for listening to me like proselytize and ramble about bullshit and practically nothing. Uh, I hope that I have invaded your ears in a way that you think is good. Uh, that's Reach. I've been Alfred. Thank you.